Have you been dreaming of buying your very own short-term rental investment property, but maybe you feel a little stuck on how to get started? If so, then this is the perfect video for you. We're going to share 10 easy steps you can follow right now to start investing in short-term rentals. Hey everyone, if this is your first time here, I'm Tony. I'm Sarah. And we're real estate investors who quit our day jobs by investing in short-term rentals. And we're here to show you how you can do the exact same thing. <laughs> so people come to us all the time and say, Sarah, Tony, I know that I want to invest in short-term rentals, but I have no idea where to start. Well, today we're going to go over the 10 steps that anyone interested in investing in short-term rentals should follow. These are the exact same steps we followed when we got started and we're on track to do at least about $1.5 million in revenue on Airbnb this year across our portfolio. So with that in mind, let's dive into the 10 steps. Step number one is choosing your market. Your success as a short-term rental investor starts with your ability to pick a good market. Now, when it comes to choosing your market, we encourage you to follow what we call the three P's of market selection. Now, each P stands for a different principle you need to follow when choosing a market. So let's go through them. So the first P stands for policies. This means you need to have a solid understanding of the policies, laws, and ordinances involving short-term rentals for your target market. So first of all, you need to make sure that the market you're interested in actually allows you to rent a property out on a short-term basis. And if they do, then you need to understand what the permitting process looks like because you need a permit to do that. For example, in some cities, even if they allow for short-term rentals, they may place a cap on the number of permits they'll yeah. issue, or they'll limit short-term rentals to a specific part of town. Either way, you'll want to understand what you'll need to do in order to get and maintain a permit in that city. So that's the first P, make sure you understand the policies of the market. Now, the second P stands for popularity. Now, when we say popularity, what we're really trying to understand here is how popular is that specific market for short-term rentals? Because contrary to popular belief, you actually do want a market that is somewhat popular. And here's why, right? Now, when a market is popular, you get two things. First, you get a steady flow of visitors who will potentially book your place for their vacation. Uh, and second, you get the workforce you need to support your short-term rentals, yeah. which mostly consists of good cleaners and handymen. So you can find a market that allows for short-term rentals, but if you can't find anyone to clean it or there aren't enough people coming into town to book the place regularly, then it's not a market really worth investing in. Now, I know a lot of people shy away from competitive markets, and you know we do believe that there is a certain point where a market maybe becomes too competitive, but a healthy level of competition is a good thing. Now, the third and final Final P stands for profits. What you're looking for here is how expensive are the properties relative to the potential revenue that they'll generate. So those are your three Ps for market selection. If you want to learn more about how we analyze markets, check the link in the description for a video where we deep dive how we look for new markets. So once you've chosen your market, the next step is to figure out how you're going to finance your short-term rental. So we'll highlight some of the most common ways. Now, first you can use a 10% down second home loan. Uh, now there are some restrictions with this loan, uh, mostly being that you have to use the property personally for at least about two weeks out of the year. But the benefit is that it's only 10% down and it's a 30 year fixed term. The second way you can finance your short term rental is with a traditional investment loan. So you can expect to put anywhere between 15 and 30% down, depending on the lender you're working with. Another option to finance your short term rental is to use what's called a debt service coverage ratio loan or D DSCR loan for short. Now, I know the name sounds kind of confusing, but uh, this loan option is cool because instead of focusing all of their attention on you as the borrower, when you use a DSCR loan, the bank is looking at you and the property. So basically they're saying, will this property generate enough income as a short-term rental to cover the mortgage payment, not necessarily you as the borrower? And if the answer is yes, then you have a pretty good chance of getting approved for a DSCR based loan. The last option we'll cover here is what's called a hard money loan. So this is a type of loan that is best for properties that are a bit run down and need some renovations to bring it back to life. Hard money is helpful because these types of lenders can close quickly, they'll help fund your rehab, and they'll also look at the property to help determine loan approval. So we've used a variety of these financing options to help us scale our portfolio. 
Uh, I think you just have to find the, the one that best suits your unique situation and resources. Now, we've got another video where we interviewed our lender about all the ins and outs about getting approved for a 10% down second home loan. We'll link that in the description as well. So on to step number three, which is creating your deal flow. So once you've figured out your market and you figured out how you're going to actually finance your property, the next step is to start finding some deals to analyze. Now, I'll quickly outline some of the ways that we've gone about finding deals. First is working with an agent and getting deals off of the MLS. So this is probably the easiest way to find deals because it's as simple as opening up Zillow and seeing what's available. But because this is the easiest path, it's also the most competitive. The second method for finding deals is going directly to the sellers. Uh, this means you're driving around your target market, you're looking for houses that need a little love, you're knocking on doors and you're talking to the homeowners. Do you wanna build a snowman? Uh, you can also do things like sending postcards or letters to the owners, or you can look up their phone numbers and give them a call. And the third way you can find deals is by working with what's known as a wholesaler. So a wholesaler does all of the work of finding off-market deals like Tony just described. Then they sell those properties to investors like us and you. All right, so now that you have deals coming across your desk, it's time for you to start analyzing those properties, which brings us to step four, which is to master your analyzing skills. Now, before we give you this overview, of how to analyze a short-term rental, we just want to point out that we have a 23-minute video on our channel that breaks this down in a way more detailed example. Now, there are three main categories you'll need to understand when analyzing a property as a potential short-term rental. Now, the first category is the property's projected income. The second category is the property's projected expenses. And the third category is the amount of money you'll need to invest into the property to actually purchase it. But check the link in our description to see a full video again 23 minutes long we do a really deep dive on this exact topic tony does a really deep dive <laughs> yeah i do a really deep dive Hello there. All right, on to step number five, and that is establish your management team. Your team is absolutely critical to achieving success as a short-term rental investor, and they're even more important if you plan to scale beyond just one property. So there are two key players on your short-term rental management team. The first is your cleaner, and the second is your handyman. Cleaners are super important because they're the ones who get the property ready for each guest. And if they do a poor job, it has a direct impact on your property's performance. If guests come into a dirty house, they're going to ask for a refund and they're gonna leave a bad review. And if that happens often enough, your short-term rental's profitability will get hurt. So be sure to take time to find a really good cleaner and hold them to a high standard when it comes to cleaning your property. So here are four quick ways you can find a cleaner. First is asking other Airbnb hosts in your market for a referral. Some may share, some may not, but it all depends on where you're going or who you're talking to. Uh, second is going into local Facebook groups and seeing if there are cleaners advertising there. Third is asking for a recommendation from your realtor. And fourth is using sites like Angie's List or Thumbtack. All right, so after you lock in your cleaner, the next important person on your team is your handyman. Yeah, our handyman, they have like a good working knowledge of most trades and can handle like literally the vast majority yeah. of issues at our property the same day that they happen. Like it's very rare we have to wait like multiple days for them to get out there. And as a bonus, they're typically cheaper than calling like a plumber or an electrician. So you'll 100% need to find a reliable handyman. And if you're wondering how to find that handyman, you can literally just follow the same steps Tony just outlined for finding a good cleaner. So that's step number five, assembling a rock star team for your short-term rental. But before we move on to the last five steps, we'd really appreciate if you guys could give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications. Every new subscriber really does mean a lot to us and we have a goal of getting to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I hope Let's get there. So if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, you can connect with us on Instagram. I'm at Tony J. Robinson. She's at Sarah Rad. And if you're on TikTok, don't forget to follow us there at The Real Estate Robinsons. We've also got a totally free download for all of our subscribers. If you head over to alphageekcapital.com, forward slash calculator, we've put together a free tool that helps you analyze properties you're considering purchasing as a short-term rental. And last but not least, if you are not yet an Airbnb host, sign up using our link in the description. You'll get a cash bonus for signing up and we'll get a small cash bonus as well for referring you. All right, so let's keep rolling. Step number six is to design your space. 
All right, so the first step in designing your property is to figure out an overall vibe for what you're going for. Uh, you can grab inspiration from Pinterest or other popular Airbnbs in your market. Now, you definitely don't want to copy other listings in your market exactly. You want your listing to stand out and that won't happen if you're picking the exact same furniture as a property down the road. But like Tony said, looking at a popular listing in that market can at least give you a sense of what guests are into in that market. Now, if you don't have an eye for design, we highly recommend working with a professional. Getting the design step is absolutely sure. crucial to the success of your property as an Airbnb or, or, or property on Verbo. And luckily for you, if you need help designing, uh, we actually have a design service yes. where we can design your Airbnb for you. Just head over to the real estate robinsons.com forward slash design, and we can set you up with a consultation with our in-house designer. All right. So that's step number six. All right. Step number seven is to create your pricing strategy. Now this is where you make or break the potential profitability of your property. So let us give you a few tips on pricing. First, First, you 100% need to use a dynamic pricing tool, which allows you to dynamically change the prices for your listing based on the demand in your market and different trends happening near your listing. The second tip is to create what's called a comp set, uh, which is basically a collection of properties that are in your market and similar to your property. Now, the third and final tip when it comes to pricing is to experiment on a regular basis. The point here is that there are a lot of factors, a lot of different levers you can pull that will impact your pricing and your revenue. So experiment until you find the right mix for your listing. So that's it. That's step number seven, creating your pricing strategy. All right, step number eight is to set up your automation tools. Now, part of what we love about investing in short-term rentals is that there are several pieces of really helpful automation tools that can decrease the amount of time that's needed from you as the owner to actually manage the property. We highly encourage every new short-term rental investor to get a property management software, even if you only have one property. So some of the biggest property management software companies are Owner Res, Hospitable, and Your Porter. Now they all pretty much do the same thing. So you just wanna choose the one that you connect with and feel like, you know, works best with your technology abilities, right? Some are easy to use than others. But these property management softwares, or PMS for short, allow you to do things like automating messages to guests when they book your property, or creating unique door codes for each guest, or notifying your cleaners whenever there is a new booking. So we won't spend too much time here because the value is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, we just encourage you to check out one of the PMS companies we mentioned and choose the one that fits your unique style. Now, we also have a video on how we use these platforms to communicate with our guests. So we'll drop that in the description as well. All right, so we're getting close to the finish line here. So step number nine is the culmination of all of your hard work. This is the step where you finally take your listing live. <laughs> now, we recommend listing your property on more than one platform. Now, we always list ours on both Airbnb and Verbo, and our goal is to get set up on booking.com this year as well. The more platforms you're on, the higher the chance you have of getting a booking. It can seem scary to hit publish and take your listing live, but this is really the point where you start making money. All right, and on to step number 10, which is the last and final step, and that is to manage your guests. Now, once you actually create your listing, the hard work has actually only just begun. We know there was a lot of steps to get here, but the real work comes on the day-to-day -day basis of managing your property and you know dealing with your guests and kind of keeping them happy. So we'll give you guys a few quick tips on how to do this without driving yourself crazy. First, set super clear expectations for your guests before they even check in. Part of what drives guests crazy is when they expect one experience and then they receive a totally different experience when they actually get to your property. It means letting your guests know up front whether or not you provide coffee or if they need to bring their own. Yeah, so hopefully you get the gist, right? Yeah. But the less surprises, negative surprises your guest has when they get to your property, the better. The next tip is to be quick to offer a refund. Now in our mind, a small refund is better than a bad review because we'd rather give up 25 bucks or 50 bucks or even a hundred bucks mm. as opposed to getting like a four star review because something went wrong. Now the third tip is to respond quickly. We try and get back to our guests as fast as possible whenever they have a question. And our guests really do appreciate that. We get reviews all the time that compliments us on how communicative we are. 
And a big part of that is just responding in a timely fashion. Even if you don't have an answer at that moment, just respond and say, oh my God, I'm so sorry, let me get back to you on that within the next hour or two, or however much time you think you need to figure out the answer. So that's it for today, guys. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and we'll do our best to get back to you. That's it for today. I'm Sarah. I'm Tony. And we are the Real, Real Estate, Estate Robinsons. Robinsons.